الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continue on in our study of the hadith course book we reached the 11th hadith and the subject or the topic of this hadith is the that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the strong believer more than he loves the weak believer but notice I said he loves a strong believer more than. That doesn't mean he doesn't love the weak believer. So, so as long as someone is a mu'min, as long as someone is a Muslim, then they have the love of Allah then the Lord of the heavens and earth loves them. And he is with them. But those who are stronger in Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more love for. And this is what the Dalil shows us from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. An Abi Hurairata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Mu'min Al-Qawi Khayran wa Ahabbu ila Allahi min Al-Mu'min Al-Da'if Wa fi kulli khayr Ihras ala ma yanfaq Wa sta'an billah Wa la ta'jiz فَإِنْ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٌ فَلَا تَقُولُ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا لَكَنْ لَكَنَا كَذَا وَكَذَا لَكَنَا كَذَا وَكَذَا وَلَكِنْ قُلْ قَدْرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَافَعَهُ فَإِنْ لَوْ تَفْتَحُ عَمَلُ الشَّيْطَانِ رُوَاهُ مُسْلِمٌ in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, he said that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the strong believer is better and more beloved by Allah, the most merciful, than the weak believer. But in both of them there is good. Work hard for that which benefits you and seek help from Allah and do not give up. If you are stricken by misfortune, do not say, if only I had done such and such. Rather say, Allah has decreed and what Allah wills, He does. For verily the words, if only open the door to the shaitan or the shaitan's works. And this is narrated in Muslim. In this hadith, which has immense and enormous benefits, the Prophet ﷺ explained for us that there are strong believers and there are weak believers. Al-Mu'minul Qawi khayran wa ahabbu illallahi min al-Mu'min al-Da'if The strong believer is more beloved to Allah. That means Allah loves the strong believer more than the weak believer. But as the Prophet ﷺ said, وَفِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ And in both of them, all of them have good. All the believers have good. So we learn that from this hadith. And we also learn that people have different levels of iman. People are... and from other hadith and other nusus, we learn that also our iman fluctuates. And this goes back to the hadith we did the other day when we talked about men ra'a minkum munkarin. Whoever uh, sees a munkar, then change it with your hand. Showing us that there's different levels of iman. And there's different levels of changing the munkar. Either with your tongue or by speaking out against it or by uh, hating it in your heart. All of that's from Iman. So that would fall under the one who hates it in their heart, hates a munkar, and they don't try to change it. That falls under the mu'min da'if. He's weak, or she's weak, because she can't change it with her hand, she can't speak out against it, 
she, for whatever reason, she just has the restricted to hating it in her heart. She doesn't have the strength, the power, the iman, or what have you, or the qudra, the general ability to do, to change it. So then she just, she or he hates it in their heart. <laughs> then the Prophet ﷺ gave golden advice. The Prophet he he said, Ehras, this is first and foremost, this is fi'al amr. This is a command in the imperative form. So he ordered, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do that which benefits you. Why is that a golden advice? Because if it doesn't benefit you, it either harms you or there's no there's no good in it anyway. Either it benefits you or it harms you. Or perhaps perhaps in the middle of those two levels. So the Prophet Sallallahu ordered, do those things which benefit you. So that means for us not to involve ourselves in things that don't benefit us. For example, speaking bad about people. Backbiting people, uh, you know, anything that is not going to benefit you. If it's not going to benefit you in some way, especially related to your iman, or related to your time, or related to your health, because all your health and, and your time and your wealth, all of those things help you, can help you with regards to your iman, if you use it for obedience. Meaning, if you have halal work and you have wealth, or you, you don't have to work, you have a business, whatever, you have money, you can use it for a lot of khair. You can lose it for a, a lot of good. So, in that situation, busying yourself with your business can be good. Keeping your business running, making sure you manage your finances, and make sure you spend it on halal. This is something beneficial. But if you're using your time for something haram, then there's dharar. There's harm in it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, La dharar wa la dirar. Do not harm, and there's no reciprocating harm. So in Islam, we're forbidden from doing those things which are harmful. If you backbite someone, you speak about this person, or speak about that person, you might harm that person, maybe harm their reputation, or harm their feelings. And you harm yourself. So there is dharar in there. There's harm in every way there. You harm yourself and you harm the person. And you might not find that harm for yourself until the to the day of judgment. When that person comes to take good deeds from you. So very important. Use your time wisely. Do those things which benefit you. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, which also is in the imperative form. Wista'an billah. Wala taqjiz. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and rely upon Allah or seek the help of Allah. And do not become weak. Or do not give up. So here, the Prophet ﷺ is ordering us for our own benefit, to put your trust and seek your help and assistance from Allah And not to give up, because it's so easy when you get stress, when you get difficulties in the dunya with regards to your livelihood, difficult regards to your family, difficulty with regards to friends, all the difficulties and, and pressures that we face in our life, they can make us get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not depend upon Allah. The person who is the stronger Iman, automatically they're going to have less stress. Because their Iman is on a level where they can defend themselves against a lot of the harm because they trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally about their risk, you know, their livelihood, their family illness, their health, whatever the case may be, they put their trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
As the ulama mentioned, tawakkal on Allah. A tawakkal. A tawakkal huwa i'timad al Allah wa fi'la asbab. That relying on Allah, putting your trust in Allah, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing deeds to try to fulfill whatever you're trying to do and then putting your trust in Allah. That's full tawakkul. So tawakkul is not the extreme of just saying, well, I put my trust in Allah. I want to uh, make money so I can get married. I'm going to sit in the masjid and just pray, pray, pray. That's not true tawakkul. That's going beyond the bounds. True tawakkul means you would look for work or do things to make money, halal, and then and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the true tawakkul. That's true trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'timad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. Trusting in Allah and doing deeds to achieve what you're trying to attain. And another example the ulama give, a lot of times they say about the one who wants to have a, a baby. But they don't try to get married. They don't try to, uh, you know, any means. They just say, you know, I, I want to have a beautiful child. I want to have several children. But they don't make any effort. They don't get married. They don't, you know, nothing halal. No, not, not even the haram. They just give the example that the point being is that the trust in Allah, you have to make actions. You have to take actions and make effort. So do those things which benefit you and seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek help from Allah with whatever you're doing. And don't give up without taxes. Very important. And then the Prophet sallallahu says, so if something happens to you, don't say only if I would have did such and such and such and such. Or if it only was like this or it was like that. Don't say that. So this is something we have to be careful because we fall into it all the time, all of us. Then we say, oh, I should have did this. I should have did it like this. I knew I should have did this and that wouldn't have happened. No, it was written for you. But your choices you make are also a part of that qadr. And so you are responsible for your actions as well. So that means when you, you know, you should uh, make effort to do whatever you're trying to do and think out things you're trying to achieve. But don't say after something has happened, if only I would have, only why, because you can't change that other. It already happened. And that's why the Prophet said, that say, Qadr Allah wa masha wa masha Allah fa'al. So rather say that this is the decree of Allah and He does what He wills. This is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah does what He wills. Because by saying if you open the door to the shaitan. If you say, oh, I should have did this, and I wouldn't have got sick. Oh, I should have did this. Now we prepare for things. But the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was written. So, the next time be better. But don't delve into beating yourself up and saying low. Saying, if I did this, if I did that. Because it's already done. And that's the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that by saying that, it shows displeasure with the, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decree of Allah, and it opens up the door for the shaitan. And that's one of the ways you open the door for the shaitan. Because then you begin to have weak iman with regard to the decree of Allah, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's because the shaitan opened up that door for you, the door of weak iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم وَعَسَى أَنْ تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرًا لَكُمْ 
وعسى أن تحب شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah and it may be that you hate something and it is good for you. And it may be that you love something and it is bad for you. But Allah knows and you know not. That ayat is very powerful because if we reflect on it, many, many things. Sometimes people, they make action, they say, I think so-and-so is not good in my life. Like, for example, husband and wife. Some, uh, some men, they divorce their wives. The wife might be good and good attributes and have many good, good things about her. But he's just not pleased with one thing. And it may be better for him to keep her and be patient. And Allah will make good with that. Or something bad happens to you that we think is bad. And instead, there's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine hikmah is in that. And something good comes for you instead out of it. You know, sometimes we don't get that job we want. We don't get that scholarship we want. We don't get into the university we want. We don't get in, we don't, whatever. And it may be better for us. Another opportunity may open up. The point is, is being thankful to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and you know not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows everything. And that's from his divine wisdom. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some benefits from this hadith, the strong believer is more beloved by Allah, the all-glorious, than the weak believer. So this believer, in this respect, this is talking about Iman. And also there's a, a wudge, a way of looking at this, and also, and some of the ulama mentioned this, as far as the physical body too. That the strong believer, for example, in America or in the West, we face those challenges. The believer who knows martial arts, knows how to box, is big, can handle himself or herself, is stronger than the weak one, is stronger than the weak believer who has Iman but can't even defend themselves maybe, or defend their brothers and sisters. Many times we've seen this where we've had brothers handle situations because they can handle that, because they were strong. 